Okay, so this is a follow-up to a previous video I've done, which was a basic overview of um, creating terrains and uh, using various assets like Gaia Vegetation Studio um, to, to create a, an open world environment. I'm going to follow this up with something that's been a long time coming and something I've been trying to research over quite, quite a few months now. It's, it's had to do essentially a really large open world environment um, terrains are very heavy in terms of performance for uh, Unity um, so you, you just can't make a, a large open world um, environment uh, game uh, using just a single huge monolithic thick landscape you know like a, an 8k landscape it just isn't gonna run so you may be lucky you might have a super powerful PC but most of your players won't uh, if you're targeting VR or mobile you've got no chance um, dealing with terrains that that large so even if you've got you know like a 1080 Ti which I'm lucky to have and a powerful PC and, and can you know get away with running large terrains I know that most of the people playing my games are just not going to be able to so I want to kind of go through um, this kind of black um, how would you put it you know this this kind of um, knowledge of how you, you put this together is, is a bit of a black art um, the best advice I've had has been from a, a guy goes by the handle of Recon on the Discord servers that I'll link to below in the descriptions. Um, his advice and uh, is the way to go, you know, I've learned this the hard way, is don't try to run before you can walk. Start by just dealing with the terrain and textures and see if you can stream that um, at a high enough, at least 200 if not more FPS. Um, then start adding foliage and then start adding game objects and, and build from known working prototypes rather than just try to build a huge huge open world map and then expect to somehow be able to stream it all there's a lot of weird esoteric knowledge which is just learn by trying it out which I mentioned during this presentation um, and also I'll link to some of my notes I've started a, a and a unity forum thread about this which I add to every now and then as I learn new things and new tips and tricks so preamble over let's just dig in and, and give it a go um, so far I've installed I think the meadow environment is just brilliant uh, from nature manufacture I think I've also installed his advanced foliage pack um, and the reason partly for those is obviously they're, they're good um, models trees and foliage they're also compatible with um, vegetation studio uh, which I you know you're just not going to run a really decent performance open world natural environment without virtual studio or virtual studio pro you, you kind of have to bite the bullet and pay for that it's one of the necessary assets I would say um, but it does use a very specific shader in order to allow uh, indirect instancing so instancing of objects on the GPU so by assets that you know a vegetarian studio uh, vegetation studio um, compatible and you'll often notice it you know on the assets um, that have spoken to the developer of vegetation studio and um, and ensured that the shaders are compatible. Now, it's worth mentioning that I'll be working in 2017. Point, what am I on now? Four, I think. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, 2017.417, not 2018. Um, 2018 gives you then the benefit of going for Vegetation Studio Pro, and because of the burst compiler and the ECS systems, it, it does for make for a much more performance um, stream uh, much easier definitely in, in the in the you know long to long term future it'll be the way to go but currently I'm finding 2018 unity itself just a 
bit buggy, a bit flaky. I don't think it's going to be ready for for shipping a game until about a year or so. And I'm kind of wanting to to work on something that I I know I can depend on. So I'm personally just sticking for 2017.4 currently. Um, I might, I mean, I have been doing testing on 2018. I might do a, a kind of an accompanying video dealing with that and dealing with Vegetation Studio Pro. But for now, just I'm dealing with 2017. So I'm stuck with Vegetation uh, Studio, the original. So as I say, I'm using Nature Manufacturers assets, but I, um, but not just the Nature assets. The other thing that I'm going to be using is World Streamer, which is also by Nature Manufacturer. And there are alternatives. The, the people who make Gaia, so uh, Procedural Worlds, Adam and Co, uh, have bought Sector uh, SE. CTR, uh, uh, which comes as kind of a, it's complete and then different parts to it. The sex of stream is the actual part for streaming uh, assets or kind of worlds, and they all do kind of the same thing. And World Streamer does a similar thing. It will split up parts of your terrain or part of your level into separate scenes and then use async sync loading to load them in uh, I have used sector uh, I, I do own a license and as you can gather from the the picture here it um, it's really good for interior environments it's kind of built on this idea of portals so every time you see this kind of little door you add a sector portal and then as you go through it it loads the next scene and it works out essentially from here I'm going to lead I'm going to load these two rooms leave this one not loaded yet until then you move in here and then it will load that one and probably unload um, the ones that aren't within easy reach so it, it's kind of intelligently loading the, the scene chunks and it works really well um, when you're kind of dealing with these interior environments now Adam is is saying that it is definitely just as capable for open world landscapes and I'll also link to um, um, a, a, a GDC talk from the people who did Firewatch about how they built the world of Firewatch which is an open world exploratory game and they used sector so it is doable it's just that there's very little information about how to get that working when you when the sight lines are essentially open and that's that's the problem as you're work, walking through these parts where do you put your little portals on your open world to decide okay so when do I load the next part of my landscape whereas world streamer does things in a slightly different way it just has essentially a grid of landscape tiles and it makes it I think easier to, to get started with with open worlds so that's what I'll be using in this video and again I'll probably do a follow-up once I get a bit more information about uh, how to use sector stream for open worlds and give that a go to I, I, I'll give you the the way that I know and I guess that's the other thing I would add at this stage is this is what's working for me. I finally got to a stage when I'm streaming these terrain tiles without any lag, because the real problem, <coughs> excuse me, the real problem is the is the lag that you get as you're loading the next scene. Async scene loading is just tricky in Unity. It's, it's a lot kind of going on as it's trying to load all these assets and initializing game objects. So. Yeah, well, I'll talk about it as I do it. I think, but this first part of the of the video is really going to be a bit of a recap of what we did previously, which was just set up a landscape, and then I'll show you how to prepare it for streaming, and and then we'll get on to the streaming part itself, and I can talk about some of the issues then. So apologies for all the talk right at the start, but you kind of need to cover the context. I think it's quite important to know what you're dealing with. So as we did before, um, I opened the Gaia Manager Control G. I, I'm going to kind of skim over, skip 
over some of what I talked about previously because I'm assuming that you've watched that already but I might also get into a little bit more of the detail that I, I skipped over last time so you'll see a little bit more about the setup of these resources um, <coughs> so the first person we're just going to set up um, the kind of scene that I want um, definitely mobile and VI I mean essentially you're streaming so you want to kind of make things as easy for the uh, computer to to be able to load so make things optimized performant wherever you go at every stage I would say so, I mean some people might say to you worry about optimization later actually when you're dealing with this kind of streaming just do it as part of your process think about so how heavy is that resource does it need to be that heavy um, try to kind of optimize as you go so I'm going to pick the profile which is for mobile and VR rather than go for the desktop one because I want it to be perform as performant as I can um, now we're going to cut the terrain into little parts so you, this is where you could start going crazy and you can start 8k 16k um, but when you're dealing with a lot of asset um, and terrain tiles you're kind of increasing the time that things take so just to make things easier for me as I do this tutorial I'm just going to put pick a 4k uh, terrain but the principles are exactly the same if you went higher and you'll kind of understand that as I as I do it so 4k and I've changed I've essentially what I did is I had the desktop settings Um, and I just duplicated actually I'm so used to just going control D uh, is it actually a duplicate probably not just control D to create a, a duplicate and then I went through it through each of these settings and you can see so the, the original desktop setting is it is an 8k terrain you've got your terrain height, your uh, height map resolution the detail resolution and the base map resolution now I've tweaked those uh, here you can see I've kind of pretty much gone through if I flick through each of the two you can see the changes I've made I've, I've been quite harsh I think possibly I've gone over the top on making the high map resolution too low from the tests that I've done so far it's get, you, you know if you're looking for high detail you probably will want to go a little bit higher so where I've gone for 10 uh, 2049 you might possibly go to 1025 now exactly why the high map resolution is a nod number so you'd expect it to be 512 and 2048 I, I don't know and somebody somewhere um, will know and can kind of chip into the comments maybe and let us know exactly why that's an odd number and it's not something I've ever looked into it just is a memory if you type in 512 it'll reset to 513 yeah so it knows it needs to be at that okay so I've kind of changed also the detailed distance detailed density just pretty much I think went through everything and not exactly halved but and pretty drastically reduce things where I could and this is as you make your own streaming landscapes just give it a go you know do it once with these very low settings see how it goes um, and if you've got a bit of headroom performance headroom in terms of the tile loads and you're not getting any lagging then hey go back and change things so there do be aware that if you're changing these settings on your landscape <coughs> Sorry, I've got a tickly throat. Uh, as you're changing these, so on a live landscape, this was a terrain asset, uh, it will wipe um, every all the data. So it'll wipe the, your, you know, your mountains, your hills, um, and if you've got details, it'll remove the foliage. And if you do it on the base map, it'll wipe your textures. Um, so yeah be aware that unless you've got uh, an asset I think Path Painter by uh, Procedural Worlds will allow you to change those on the fly um, but uh, otherwise yeah you're, you're kind of you make a decision right at the start of the process and then you would have to go back 
So that's the change I made and that's the one I've uh, reduced things down and I've used um, for my terrain defaults. Uh, I've also got a nature manufacturer um, terrain resources asset. So that's the one that chooses what your maps are going to be on the, uh, sorry, what your textures are going to be on the splat map. And if you're using them, details, so you know what grass and trees are going to be spawned. I'm not actually going to use Gaia to spawn any details or trees. I'm going to let a nature manufacturer do that. Um, so I don't need to worry so much about that. Um, I might change these. What have we got? We've got, I've got the first one is mud. So let me show you how I initially change them although in fact I've done one already which is the meadow asset really nice uh, asset I would highly recommend it so maybe I'll, I'll use that um, but I might tweak it so let me control D again to make a, a change and I'm gonna call that Okay, so I'm on to so the meadow soil. Yeah, it's fine. That's like a kind of a um, so you some yeah little trick that you can't see it right now because it's just gone off the screen. But I'm just adding using this little thing here to add an additional tab, and you can add multiple inspectors. So if you were on a it's not so obvious on a you know time capturing at a small size um, screen but on multi on multiple monitors it makes a lot of sense to have two inspectors yeah you, know, you can lock one and then you can start doing things like in the locked ones so, alright I want to inspect this what's that asset okay that's this asset what's that asset click on it it's this asset I often have two inspector panels open I'm gonna drag it across the separate a window and just makes space across made multiple monitors usually but you can see the kind of the concept and I might need to do that quite a lot later because it's really helpful to be able to have for example vegetation studio open here and be looking at the assets that are on it so yeah there's a nice little trick remember this lock icon locks the inspector so it doesn't matter if I'm clicking on here and then one inspector is not locked and uh, I can just inspect things. So what I wanted to do, let me see, so I've got, yeah, so this meadow soil is this kind of ground, basic ground, that's a good starter. Or so the first texture on your landscape is just gonna to apply to everything and then everything else gets added on top of that. So choose something that's good for your, your base. And that that is good for the base. Let's have a look at the criteria. So the spawn criteria is the same as it was originally. So yeah, that'll do. Then you're moving to grass. And then because I've just essentially made a copy of the original Gaia one, it's gonna look for, let me see, it's gonna, yeah, so it's gonna be rocks is what it's looking for here. So let me do that, let me keep, yeah, I think I'd like to keep so I tried this previously and had um, as my th third and fourth textures I had this forest ground um, but it kind of worked but only just a little yeah, not, not properly I like the leaves one I might think I think for this one I want it to be Meadow. Just done a search in here just to get back to my and then so yes, yeah, so it's a Gaia data. So I want to look back to what the originals were. So the original is this T ground. So you can see how useful it is to have that open because this remains here. So that's which one is it? That's the third one. Hmm. I do want one, and you'll see why, but I want number three to be just 
something that's going to remind it's going to be the placement of the, the forest the trees uh, yes I'm what I'll do is I'll use the rock here so that will be uh, I can actually call it mountain rocks that's the very top of the mountains and it's based on the spawn criteria that that's defined it's, it's about yeah it's got to be high it's got to be steep um, that's that's the way that the original Gaia asset works oh actually I say that I put it in the wrong place glad I checked so now it's this one that needs to be mountain rocks and we'll call that forest grass because that's what it will be Yeah, let's double check that criteria so there's only one they're not using the check height but using the slope so it's got the slope's got to be high 15 to 90 and that's all it's using actually so it's the, the heavier slope My, is that right yeah let me have a look at Oh, that's the wrong thing. Gaia data, it was. That's the original. Oh, so, what's the middle one? Because what the original Gaia profiles do, they do a nice kind of mix between the rock, the, the essentially two different types of rock. So, one thing I think I might want to be doing is copying some of what's going on in here and including it in my essentially single mountain rock. I'm essentially bringing together the ground rock and the oh, so ground rock 2 and ground rock 1 into 1. Uh, you can obviously add more of these and there's nothing to stop you going back up and so the texture prototypes have a size of 4 so you can make it 5 or more but these textures work in groups of 4 as soon as you get Five, I think I mentioned that in the previous uh, video. If you have five, you're essentially you might as well go with a full eight because it's a it's kind of a whole slot of fours and fours. So for now, again, I'm just keeping things as small as possible. I'm not going to actually deal with CTS today, although the process is going to be the same. And I think Microsplat might be a good option too because I think Microsplat can deal with a lot of textures much more efficiently. But no, so currently I'm just going to try to take some of the spawn criteria for two and add it to what is my mountain rock so it's got a check height min height two yeah so why not I'm going to add that min height two and it has a All I've done is I've clicked new, I've, so you click that, it opens presets, and at the bottom of that is the option to make it a new one. So I wanted a new one so I can just copy and paste this. So then just by copying on here, and I get two. Yeah. That looks like it's right. So I've got that one on that one. And then we've got a 15 to 20, or is the check slope here is more. And some maybe I'm gonna go with a half. I'm gonna keep that slope and everything else is not matching three. It's actually not switched on, so that doesn't make anything. So if that was turned on, if that was ticked and it was doing a match for texture, it would say not three. So wherever texture three is, you can't put this one on. That's what that means. Okay, so I've got so I've got I've got to fix my forest grass, and then I've got a bit of a choice as to choosing which of the forest. Yes, yeah, so I I like that 
um, it's the forest ground one I like the forest leaves yeah just gonna go with that so forest leaves and forest leaves normal down and I happen to know that it wants a texture size of four right so I've created my asset I'll close that for now because it's just going to get in the way with a small screen um, and where were we ah. so I'm using another asset which I've mentioned in the past shelf really useful if you get stuck having to kind of scroll up and down project windows the project hierarchy um, you can just use shelf you just drag and drop folders and then you can immediately go down to where you're looking so uh, it's two that I've just created so this is the one I'm going to be using now this is the terrain resource and the game object resources is a very similar process it's in fact I think it's the same scriptable object but um, down below in game object prototypes they've added depending on which of the um, provided resource uh, assets you're using you know Cinti or the, the main desktop uh, Gaia package is the is a, um, village exteriors um, which is really good too so I'm not going to be using it so I can just ignore it I'm done I'm just going to press create terrain show stamper so I've got a flat let me move that out of the way Got a flat um, terrain. Let me game view. Let me move out of the way. Nearly, nearly all in view. Okay. Um, I don't think I went into it. So I'll unlock this so I can actually see. Uh, the stamper. I don't think I went into a lot of detail about stamping. I can't remember on the last one. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more maybe than I did last time in terms of stamping and go. So, Gaia, Gaia, Gaia stamps and. The imported hills, rugged hills. No, I don't think so. It's a part of nature manufactures meadow environment. Ah, uh, there they go. Oh, I know. Terrain stamps, Gaia stamps. Uh, they Gaia stamps from the meadow, uh, meadow environment. So I'm going to might as well use those, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them into where I expect them to be, which is the Gaia stamps folder, just to make things easier. And rename that Meadow Environment. Okay. So back on my stamper. Um, what have we got? There's an, yeah, another good instance of when you, it's useful to have. Uh, oh, I can see my lighting just baking in the background. Just untick auto generate, It'll give you extra CPU cycles. So there's my, it's just essentially just to see. Mm. be a good starting point so drag that in and so it's ground stamping but I think probably the height is a bit excessive gonna and something we're thinking about um, as your um, working on this and it's a mistake I often make 
partly in terms of stamping but also in terms of texturing is this is a 4k uh, four kilometer square it's huge um, but because we're in the editor and we're looking at it from a distance because it makes it easier to, to, to see things it, it's easy to kind of not get a sense of scale so you possibly you know might want to start adding even if the placeholder points of interest like a house or a character or you know they, they don't have to, well, I would recommend they don't stay because you want to do that much further down the line but just to add them to give you that sense of scale of what you're trying to do um, so yeah maybe even yeah I've got to keep it like that and then do I yeah I'll leave that and I'll So it's ground, so that's why it's going to. I think it's going to go a bit higher. No, just a small lake in the middle. Fine. So turn off the preview and stamp. So that's my initial stamp, and then what I want to do is add some mountains around the edges. So just because. And eventually I'll just end up um, when you get to the end you'll it'll be you know impossible wall as it were so let's get some mountains turn the preview back on and turn that back on I have not selected my stamp, sorry my fault. I was looking for my handlebars just to be able to move things. It's not the best mountain. It's not an island that I want. Try something normal I stem just kind of forces it to what it's recorded as. So that's a bit better. Yeah, okay. And if you remember the distance mask, this is an important part of how you merge from your stamp into the existing terrain. So if I just leave it without a mask, so i.e. this flat lined curve, it would just literally just snap, you know, go straight from the edge of one into the edge of the other obviously depending on what you've set here so currently you would just stem they would just go flat 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 and then straight up into I want a gradual curve so let me use something that's a little bit yeah Actually, that's as nice and smooth and F so I can preview it a nicer one I guess I'll go with that or maybe even ease it out just a touch um, so what I'm thinking about is in terms of creating a barrier around Go on. It's looking good. I'm obviously trying to turn the preview back on, not to make things too repetitive, but also not spend too much time on the setup. Stamp.
dump. Hopefully you get an idea of the kind of work you know that goes into uh, the maps that you might be playing in games and so make sure that's on the edge. She needs more need because can see you could potentially kind of think oh I can walk through here I don't right I'm just gonna make that even bigger and you can just pick one axis so I'm just pulling the height up there okay stamp turn off the preview yeah it's looking good so kind of it's quite nice uh, flattish area in the middle and some kind of mountains around the edge and as I say it feels very much like oh this is quite tiny but actually it's, it's quite a big area while I'm here let me just add a few more hills. Um, I don't want to normalize this stem. I want this to be much more subtle. Yeah. Um, my height also. Three. Let's turn on the preview. So that's huge, isn't it? So I'm still raising stamp. Why not just add, say, don't want to complicate things with rivers, possibly, possibly not. Uh, not at this stage. I think it's looking pretty good. I just kind of, I think what I'm slightly missing is a slightly flatter area, but maybe what I can do. I think these, I've never been fully sure what these pieces are. They sometimes work as nice, kind of flattish area with some variation. Let me do this. Turn on the preview so I can see it. Select the stamper object. We've got this kind of flat but uh, detail. Turn it off. Yeah. So kind of this slightly raised. 
exactly what I want to do. I just want to lower here. Turn off so we see the result. Yeah, I think so. so actually, I'm just trying to even this out. Right, so I'm done, I think. That'll do for what I'm looking for. And obviously, you know, there's nothing to stop you. As I mentioned before, this is just a terrain. You can unlock this. We see the terrain tools. You can paint your heights, you know, just even things out here. Um, and while I'm here, something really important to as you're working with the your initial terrain, which we're going to cut into little tiles, you first build your big, you know, 8k whatever it's going to be uh, environment at the very very start make sure that you haven't got any textures you don't expect because it's a pain to have to go through every single tile to remove them so this is right because this is i, I started with a fresh terrain and then these are the um, textures that came in from the uh, Gaia asset prototypes are the ones that were defined in my terrain resources but sometimes for whatever reason you've got some you know additional textures left over from previous work or if you had unity open you were doing work on another terrain and then you've created a new one and bang you've got all this stuff added that you're not using so do check at this stage when it's still one terrain um, and the other place to check is yeah trees so guy has added these um i don't want them i'm just gonna oh, select it edit tree remove trees i want to make sure that i haven't got any trees associated with that terrain and ditto with all the foliage so remove 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 this all came in from the gaia asset resource the terrain resource asset because it's expecting me to to do the next part which is the create spawners um, which I can do now and it's expecting me to go through all of this you know the trees and the, um, the various but actually I'm not going to do any of them I'm not going to do any of the coverage stuff I can just delete it the one I am interested in is the this texture um, but before I do that, let me check that I've got everything I need. So, got my terrain. Um, so yeah, this is your final chance, really, to start messing around with these resolution settings that I talked about before. Um, the other thing I want to do before I start adding the texture is the final kind of terrain um, Gaia type of stuff. So you might at this stage, you're going to your utilities terrain utilities which are in a different place on the new guy are actually which make it made them make they're easier to to get hold of um, things like growth features what do I want to do possibly possibly you know, grow features mm, I like the mountains they are I think I think we'll get away with that um, subtract from terrain would be to lower it. actually add to terrain might be a nice idea just make it just a little bit higher that's too much back to start I just want to make that lake a little bit smaller it feels like it's huge but actually it, it feels like it's small but it, it's a it's a large lake um, so that's fine. I think I will. Um, which one is it? Shrink features. Yeah, it just kind of it's as it says here, it's it's kind of um it can be used as a kind of smoothing. Let me try it. See what happens. Form operation. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of slightly smooth things. I know the smoothing part is really useful when you're using low resolutions so I showed you the tech the uh, resolution for the um, uh, for the terrain and the height map resolution will define how smooth the curves are the contours are for this 
terrain. Let me get a bit closer. Let's have a look. See if we could. So you can see it's slightly kind of there's some edges, hard edges. That's to do with the resolution being quite low. So you're not going to have the kind of the beautifully modelled terrain that you might be used to. And as I said right at the start, you know, do feel free to up the resolution and, and, and try that. But in some instances, and a lot of what I'm trying to do is to do these VR landscapes, so I'm kind of having to do, yeah, n not go quite as hard on, as high on resolution. So I mean, yeah, I think it, it does work better for the kind of work that I'm doing, but you you might not want to go down that route. So that's just, you know, you can keep going with just changing how you want to model your terrain. And then... The second bit I want to do is, I think it's on, no it is on here, and it's in there, you have to tick on terrain helper, and smooth terrain, that just does one more pass of, yeah, you just get one chance at it, of just optimising things, so you're essentially removing any additional stuff, and you may not want to go down that route, but for my use case, that's what I'm needing so that's not bad it's pretty good and you might want more detail in the middle to break it up to be honest but <clears throat> for now let's just go with that so select the coverage spawner make sure that you've still got the resource that you're expecting and just gonna go spawn Okay, so you can see I've got lots of grass, I've got the mountain that I defined, which is looking like what I was hoping. That's good. And some little bits of leaves dotted about. So at this stage, I would do a little bit of manual painting. So I think I is good at just doing that initial lot, but uh, I keep on saying, you know, don't forget that this is um, still just a normal terrain. So let me do a little bit of extra stuff, and I think essentially, not too too. I, mean, I don't want to go. I just want to really low opacity. I just want to make sure that. painting over some of the brown and it's just to even out some of this so it's not just completely um, the, the brown are leaves that's what it's been set as and I want to have this kind of darker mixture and then what I'll do is um, in vegetation studio I'll make some bigger patches which will define forests so I don't want it to be too too much like it's a pretty big uh, valley I guess we're in the middle of this okay Again, I don't want to spend too too long on it so this uh, one four is going to be my this is the it's going to be the, the texture that Vegetation Studio uses for making forests so you can see now the resolution how it's being kind of down sized you would have smaller squares on here if you had increased the splat map resolution but I'm kind of having to reduce things where I can now 
level. I'm just trying to decide where I want my forests. So I need a bit more opacity. mentioned about scale and it these feel a bit small but I've learned from experience that actually it's kind of what you need you need them to be quite quite small doing it properly I think I would uh, do kind of a bit of a ring all the way around you know forest just to hide that moving movement into the into the high hills let me just you know Showing you the, the kind of the workflow and the basics of the, of the reasoning of what I do. Also, you'll notice the textures. You can see the repeat they're kind of they've got this um, and you would I think use either CTS or um, I might have lost that one. there we go uh, would you CTS or a similar asset to get rid of some of that getting there I think I'm getting a bit more sloppy as I'm going along but I don't want to drag this recording on too long so I'm nearly 50 minutes in and I've just essentially done the preliminary work that makes sense Something I want to do is to just ease the edge of the mountains. So you see, it's going from grass to um, forest. Oh, sorry, it's going from grass to rock very quickly. And I think because I've got this soil texture that I can use, 
that's too much. Control Z. I want to just add a little bit. Oh, it's still too much. Wow. So I've got to be really careful. Soft touch around there. So essentially just ease the transition between somewhere where it's okay for terrain to have grass and another you can see my GP is slightly going on I think it's going to be worth doing because otherwise you would just get this odd like um, just transition for my token just rock and then suddenly grass so I'm going to use it a lot of texture um, Vegetation Studio. Uh, kind of using texture to define where the foliage is going to go. I'm being a bit sloppy with this, but I'm trying to get it done fairly quickly. And you can something I've, I think I've learned also is you can do um, these nice kind of down strokes using essentially a, a contrasting texture, which helps kind of accentuate the flow lines that you get off of mountains. Well, that's not ideal, is it? terms of you could conceivably find your way walking past I should have seen that earlier on but hey you could always put something in the way there's nothing to stop you then you know using points of interest as ways to you know, like a big cliff and that's something I probably won't explore at this stage but there's nothing to stop you then adding cliff meshes to get back um, that some of the detail that I've lost by having to um, okay so that's an interesting it looks fairly flat but seems to have quite a lot of Um, yes, it's some of that resolution that has been lost from having a, a low resolution splat, uh, terrain height, you can bring back by adding rock meshes, cliff meshes. Oh, 
so it's uh, <laughs> fireworks night. Excuse the fireworks in the background if you hear them. Something I'd be meaning to get hold of is a tablet. I have a feeling this must be a lot easier, more kind of tactile and immediate if you're dealing with a tablet. Okay, I've made it all the way around. I just want to. talking about accentuating those um, flow lines okay I'll do for jazz as they say <laughs> 